Hello students, how y'all doing? Uh, it's kind of crazy, I'm sitting here talking to a computer right now. Uh, my kids, you'll probably hear them uh, in the hallway, uh, just being super crazy and loud. Uh, so I'm grateful to be in here and not out there right now. Uh, we're gonna try this, uh, don't know how it will go, um, but we'll give it a shot and go from there. So what I'm gonna try and do, um, at least for today, is I've put together a short uh, lesson to convey to you, uh, going through a couple examples on section 5.2. Um, we'll look at those things and yeah, that'll kind of be that. So we'll try and make this a little bit like school where I give you some instruction and then you can certainly follow up with questions or whatever else you have from there. So You've already by now uh, looked at your rubric again, I hope. Uh, we're gonna be focusing mainly on some level two stuff, just being able to identify decay and growth and initial values, uh, things like that in an exponential function. And then I wanna show you an example problem uh, that's gonna help you out in your homework today. So with that said, let's give it a shot. Uh, I borrowed my kids' whiteboard here. It's uh, one of those things uh, back in elementary school with the lines that helped you practice writing lowercase and uppercase letters. That's all I could find, so uh, we'll make do with it. So anyways, uh, real quick, uh, I want to give you three example functions here. The first one is y equals 4 times 0 0.7 to the x power. First off, to recognize that is an exponential function because the variables in the exponent location. Um, and then to then to next ask the question, what's your initial value? Well, the initial value in this case would be uh, your four. I think you guys are pretty good with that. Uh, in this case, your factor Okay, exponentials always have a factor, either that it's growing by or that it's uh, decaying by. Um, and that factor is your base, uh, in this case, 0 0.7. Now, because that number is less than 1, that means that this is a decay function. And that's mainly going to be what this lesson is about. Okay, so there's one quick example. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I'll maybe shorten it up a little bit. I'll show you this one here. What do we think about this one? 30 times 2 to the negative x power. Okay. Um, so it's pretty easy to recognize your initial value there being 30. Uh, but the question is, what does this negative in the exponent have to do with things? And I'd like to offer rewriting this as 2... To the negative one to the x power so we're going to think about our exponent rules going backwards uh, we're going to kind of take the negative and the x apart um, and if we thought about it this way we would say it's a power to a power and so we'd multiply it which means it's equivalent to that um, so if we thought about it this way now anything to the zero or sorry to the negative one power that means that would be um, we could move it to the denominator to make it positive like that. And so now it's pretty clear that in this case, because that factor value is less than one, this is going to represent a decay situation. When you initially looked at this, that number being uh, greater than one might indicate you initially th would think, oh, that means it's a growth uh, exponential function. But in order for us to tell, we have to have just an x exponent here. We can't have that negative with it. And so when we work that out, we recognize that this is, in fact, a decay function. Okay. So that's the first thing. Um, let's check out uh, this example. So we're actually going to look at page 275, example number six. <clears throat> So example six, I'll let you guys turn to that in your textbook uh, on page 275. And so we're going we're gonna to look at a word problem. And you can obviously see the work there, but I'm going to show you a little bit more detailed work so you can make more sense of what's going on there. 
Uh, anyways, when you drink an eight ounce cup of coffee, virtually all the caffeine is absorbed into your gut and passes through the liver and into your bloodstream acting as a stimulant. A peak blood level of caffeine, 120 milligrams, is reached in about 30 minutes and then the blood levels begin to fall exponentially. Five hours after the peak, your blood contains 60 milligrams of caffeine. Now, they want us to construct a function to model the caffeine decrease in your bloodstream over time and ultimately find an equivalent equation to model the decay of caffeine using A equal to your growth factor. We're not going to worry about graphing the sketch of that right now. Uh, but the first thing I want you to understand is that this is uh, a decaying situation. Uh, notice first off that, uh, that the caffeine in your blood rises to 120 milligrams and it's at that point that we're starting our exponential model and it's decaying exponentially after that right so um, it's going to decay at an exponential rate um, which means its growth factor has to be less than one we'll keep that in mind and notice that five hours after the peak the blood contains 60 milligrams of caffeine so first of all I want you to understand uh, the idea of a half-life. So half-life just indicates how long it takes for a certain substance to be half the value it was before. So in this case, it started at 120. Now it's at 60. That's half of the amount, and it took five hours to do that. So we say the half-life of this caffeine is five hours. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and come up with that uh, exponential function. So the first thing we need to do is establish what x equals and what y equals in our situation, okay? So x is our time in hours and y is equal to the amount of caffeine in your blood, okay? And that's gonna be measured in milligrams. Okay, so that's what we got to define our, our variables, okay? Now we recognize in this case, we're starting uh, at time zero. What is our Y value at time zero? How much caffeine is in the blood at time zero? Well, remember our exponential model is starting after the 30 minutes when it reaches the peak amount in your bloodstream. And so we're actually starting at 120 milligrams in your blood, that's time zero. Uh, and then, uh, so that, that, that's an ordered pair, X time in hours, Y amount of caffeine in your blood. We can also represent another ordered pair on our function, uh, which is after five hours, we have 60 milligrams in the blood. So with those two, uh, ordered pairs, we're going to start trying to evaluate and basically come up with. Uh, an exponential function uh, that would model this situation. So we're going to start with our basic exponential, our general function, uh, and we're initially going to recognize that, oh, we already know our C, our initial value, that's 120. Okay, so we got that down. All we need to figure out now is our A value. What's our factor? And we've already, uh, or should already recognize that because this is decaying, we know that that number is going to have to be less than one, okay? But here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna let algebra really help us here. We're gonna say that this point here has to be on our function. This is an X and this is a Y. So let's just plug those values in and solve basically. So we're gonna plug 60 in for Y. We are going to plug five in for, uh, for X. So we have 60 equals 120 A to the fifth power. Right, so I'm gonna erase this because I'm running out of room and start over. Remember what I wrote 60 equals 120 a to the fifth power. Right, so now we're gonna try and get a by itself here. So we're gonna stop by dividing by 120. So 60 over 120 is half. Hmm, that's interesting. So that's that's that idea of a half-life. Uh, that's where that comes from. So this this uh, example that I'm going through will work for any 
problem where they give you a point on the graph and you have to find the, the exponential function. Uh, it doesn't only work with half-life ones. Um, it would just give you a different value here. Anyways, we're at this point. To get A by itself, we would take the fifth root of that. Okay. We take the fifth root of both sides. That uh, The fifth root and that undo each other. There is another way I can show you that, but for now, let's just do this. When you type this into your calculator, if you're not sure how to type that in, let me know and I can I can go through that with you. But you get approximately 0.87. Okay. That's your A value. That is your decay factor. Okay. Decay factor. It's really important that you know what that those wordings mean. Okay. And so if we go back and write our function, y equals 120 times 0.87 to the x power. So this is saying you're starting with 120 milligrams in your blood. Uh, every hour, it's decaying by a factor of 0.87. So that means after five hours, if we were to put five hours in there, if you were to type this in, okay, that would give you your 60 uh, milliliters in your blood, okay? Um, so this is what we were looking for. Uh, being able to recognize our decay factor, our initial value, all those are important things to do in this, in this lesson. So uh, that's it for now. Um, go ahead and uh, get to your homework here and I'll look, to, I'll look for your answers or sorry, your questions via email. And yeah, we'll see how this goes. If there's a better way I should be doing it, but we'll try this for now. So thanks everyone.